this, he can describe his own thought process. He may very well be a scientific Rosetta Stone, a key to understanding the brain. But first, let's go back to 1983 when we met our first savant. George Finn is blessed or obsessed with calendar calculation. He'll give you the day if you give him a date. What day of the week was August 13th, 1911? Uh, Sunday. What day of the week was May 20th, 1921? Friday. <laughs> George Finn is a savant. In more politically incorrect times, he would have been called an idiot savant, a mentally handicapped or autistic person whose brain somehow possesses an island of brilliance. Do you know how you do it? I don't know, but it's just, that's, that's fantastic I can do that. If this all seems familiar, there's a reason. August 12th, 1962 is a Sunday. Five years after our broadcast, Dustin Hoffman immortalized savants like George in the movie Rain Man. Ray, how much is 4,343 times 1,234? 535-9262. He's a genius, right. Which brings us to that other savant we mentioned, Daniel Tammet, an Englishman, a 27-year-old math and memory wizard. I was born November 8, 1931. Mm -hmm. It's a prime number, 1931, and you were born on a Sunday, and this year your birthday will be on a Wednesday, and you'll be 75. Precisely. It's estimated there are only 50 true savants living in the world today, and yet none are like Daniel. He is articulate, self-sufficient, blessed with all of the spectacular ability of a savant, but with very little of the disability. Take his math skills. Okay, so 31 by 31 by 31 by 31. Yeah, is 923,521. I dare say you're right. <laughs> uh, or 17 times 17 times 17 times 17. Uh, 83,521. And it's not just calculating. His gift of memory is stunning. Briefly show him a long numerical sequence and he'll recite it right back to you. 914, um, 1934-217-1844-322-2381. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and he can do it backwards to boot. 1832234. Four four eight one seven one. That feat is just a warm up for Daniel Tammet. He first made headlines at Oxford when he publicly recited the endless sequence of numbers embodied by the Greek letter pi. Pi, the numbers we use to calculate the dimensions of a circle. It's usually rounded off to 3.14, but its numbers actually go on to infinity. Daniel studied the sequence, a thousand numbers to a page. I would sit and I would gorge on them, and I would just absorb hundreds and hundreds at a time. It took him several weeks to prepare, and then Daniel headed to Oxford, where, with number crunchers checking every digit, one, four, one, five, he opened nine, the floodgates three, six, five, of his extraordinary three, memory. Eight, three, zero, three, four, one, four, six, eight, nine, nine, six, nine, six five, zero, two, two, five, six, one, two, nine, zero, eight, seven, zero, eight, six, seven, nine, nine five, four, four, five, five, six, eight, one, five. And you were able to recite in the proper order how many? Twenty-two thousand. Twenty. Five hundred and fourteen. <laughs> Four nine six zero. It took him over five hours. Nine four seven two six five. He did it without a single mistake. Three nine nine five two zero six one four one nine six. Three five eight seven. Finished. Yeah. Scientists say a memory feat like this is truly extraordinary. Dr. V. S. Ramachandran and his team at the California Center for Brain Study tested Daniel extensively after his pie achievement. Once you met him, what did you make of him? I was surprised at how articulate and intelligent he was and was able to interact socially and introspect on his own uh, abilities. And while that introspection is extremely rare among savants, Daniel's ability to describe 
how his mind works could be invaluable to scientists studying the brain, our least understood organ. Even how you and I do, 17 minus 9 is a big mystery. You know, how are these little wisps of jelly in your brain doing their computation? We don't know that. It may seem to defy logic, but Ramachandran believes that a savant's genius could actually result from brain injury. One possibility is that many other parts of the brain are functioning abnormally or subnormally, and this allows the patient to allocate all his attentional resources to the one remaining part. And there's a lot of clinical evidence for this. Some patients have a stroke, and suddenly their artistic skills improve. That theory fits well with Daniel. At the age of four, he suffered a massive epileptic seizure. He believes that seizure contributed to his condition. Numbers were no longer simply numbers. He developed a rare crossing of the senses known as synesthesia. I see numbers in my head as colors and shapes and textures. So when I see a long sequence, the sequence forms landscapes in my mind. Every number up to 10,000 I can visualize in this way has its own color, has its own shape, has its own texture. For example, this is how Daniel says he sees pi. And when he does those instant computations, he's not calculating, but says the answer simply appears to him as a landscape of colorful shapes. The shapes aren't static. They're full of color, they're full of texture in a sense, they're full of life. Are they beautiful? Not all of them, some of them are ugly. 289 is an ugly number, I don't like it very much. <laughs> Whereas 333, for example, is beautiful to me. It's round, it's chubby. It's, it's, it's chubby. <laughs> Yet even with the development of these extraordinary abilities as a child, nobody sensed that Daniel was a prodigy, including his mother, Jennifer. But he was different. He was constantly counting things. I think what first attracted him to books was the actual numbers on each page, and he just loved counting. Do you think there is a connection between his epilepsy and his talent? He was always different from when he was really a few weeks old I noticed he was different so I'm not sure that it's entirely that but I think it might have escalated it. That it opened up that part of the yes, brain. Yes, that's why I believe, yes. Daniel was also diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, a mild form of autism. It made for a painful childhood. I would flap my hands sometimes when I was excited or pull at my fingers and pull at my lips and of course the children saw these things and would repeat them back to me and tease me about them. I would put my fingers in my ears and count very quickly in powers of 2, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. Numbers were a defense from the real world, yes? Yes, numbers were my friends and they never changed. So they were reliable. I could trust them. And yet Daniel did not retreat fully into that mysterious prison of autism as many savants do. He believes his large family may have actually forced him to adapt. Because my parents, having nine children, had so much to do, so much to cope with, I realized I had to do for myself. He now runs his own online educational business. He and his partner, Neil, try to keep a low profile, despite his growing fame. Yet the limits of his autism are always there. I find it difficult to walk in the street sometimes if there are lots of people around me. If there's lots of ni noise, I put my fingers in my ears to block it out. That anxiety keeps him close to home. He can't drive and rarely goes shopping and finds the beach a difficult place because of his compulsion to count the grains of sand. And it manifests itself in other ways, like making a very precise measurement of his cereal each morning. It must be exactly 45 grams of porridge, no more, no less. That's perfect. Daniel was recently profiled in a British documentary called Brain Man, and the producers posed a challenge he could not pass up. Learn a foreign language in a week, and not just any foreign language, but Icelandic, considered to be one of the most difficult languages to learn. In Iceland, he studied and practiced with a tutor. But it's okay to say, Then the moment of truth. The local news put him on live and put him to the test. Daniel Tammet Icelandic. 
Velkomin. Velkomin. Takk. Hvernig hefur gengið að læra? Uh, mjög vel, takk. Uh, Íslensk er fyrir mig í, uh, svo falleg. Og <laughs> já, er fyrir að læra. I was amazed. He was responding to our questions. He did understand them very well. And I thought that his grammar was very good. We are very proud of our language and then someone is able to speak it after only one week. That's, that's just great. Do you think that Daniel, in a certain way, represents a real pathway to further understanding the brain? I think one could say that time and again in science, something that looks like a curiosity initially often leads to a completely new direction of research. Sometimes they provide the golden key. Doesn't always happen. Sometimes it's just mumbo jumbo. <laughs> but that may well be true with savants. Daniel continues to volunteer for scientists who want to understand his amazing brain. But he's reluctant to become what he calls a performing seal and has refused most offers to cash in on his remarkable skills. People all the time asking me to choose numbers for the lottery or to <laughs> invent a time machine or to, 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 to come up with some great discovery. But my abilities are not those that mean that I can do everything. But he has written a book about his experiences entitled Born on a Blue Day. That was totally inspiring. He also does motivational speeches for parents of autistic children. Yet one more gift of his remarkable brain. Thanks. Thank you. But at the end of the day, genius or not, that brain does work a little differently. One hour after we leave today, and, and uh, I will not remember what you look like, and I will find it difficult to, to recognize you. If I see you again, I will remember your handkerchief, <coughs> and I, I will remember yeah, you have four buttons <coughs> on, your, on, your, on your sleeve, and I remember the type of tie you're wearing. It's the details I remember. And it's the details that make us all so different. One man may see numbers as a tedious necessity of modern life. Another sees them as the essence of life. Pi is one of the most beautiful things in all of the world. And if I can share that joy in numbers, if I can share that in some small measure with the world through my writing and through my speaking, uh, then I, I feel that I will have done something useful.